Tim Harridge here, Wholesaling Real Estate. Welcome to the 10-week course. This program has come about a very interesting way. Um, last week, a well, about three weeks ago, my niece's boyfriend contacted me and said he really wanted to learn how to uh, real estate, uh, get into real estate, want to learn how to flip and wholesale houses. He was telling me he was researching things on TikTok and uh, on Instagram and on YouTube and Bigger Pockets, and I just found it frankly interesting and intriguing. So I talked to him a little bit, had some discussions with him. Next thing you know, through two weeks of cold calling, the kid lands a deal, but he doesn't land it. He gets a fish on the hook. I'm able to help him land the deal. We turn around, we assign it. He makes, we make 10 grand together. And I had to make him split the deal with me because, I mean, I had to do everything. He didn't know how to write the contracts. He didn't know how to market for buyers. You know, so, I, I mean, I had to do the whole thing, but it, it, it's kind of funny for him splitting $10,000 only having, you know, 200 bucks in cost between his software and skip tracing I mean, he's ecstatic, right? I and mean, his rate of returns through the roof. And I almost wish we had made less money on that first deal. So anyway, I'm helping Gary uh, through the prop stream program and assigning a deal and listing a deal. And, and, and I just realized that I've got this skill set. I've got this information that I used to teach through Flip That Contract starting well over 10 years ago with George Roddy. And I just decided it was time to teach it again. So those of you that are long here live with me, this will be a 10 week process and I'm basically creating a brand new wholesale real estate uh, course. The beautiful thing is that uh, you folks, uh, there's about a dozen of you that have taken advantage of this is you get to go along here live. You get to tell me what you need and, I, and I'm going to provide that. There'll be a lot of Q and A that no one that ever buys the online kind of evergreen course, if you will, uh, they won't ever get that. So that, uh, cause obviously you can't do Q and A in a recorded fashion. So, I'm excited about it. Let's get rolling. Jenna, today we're going to talk about strategy and structure, how to set up for success, call tracking, CRM basics, website templates, legal setup, and team structure. So first off, thanks for taking action, action and attending this course. My cell phone and email are on this slide. Please feel free to put them in your phone, send me your contact information. I mean, you're paying me. Uh, I just, I'll tell you, like, don't call me. Uh, <laughs> I don't answer the phone much. Um, send me a text, shoot me an email. Uh, I prefer text over email, but then I prefer email over phone. And we're going to talk about avatars. And when we get to the marketing segment of this uh, training, but you got to understand your audience, right? And, and, and you need to understand your audience with me because you have to communicate with people you need something from in the way that they feel the most comfortable communicating. So for me, guys and gals, write down the phone number, put me in your phone, which you're going to you text me. Don't call. I know that sounds very crass, but uh, text me, then email, then call if it's an emergency. Uh, which there shouldn't be. But anyway, uh, you know, thanks for being I hope I'll help you take, I know I'll be able to help you action if you continue to do so. So just, you know, I have to do this disclaimer at the beginning of every video. Uh, think of me as an entertainer. I'm not, uh, I'm not a smart man. You should not listen to me. You shouldn't trust me. You should go get someone to verify everything I tell you. That said, here's all the reasons I think you should listen to me. Uh, if you've known me a long time, you know I'm a former Marine. Uh, I've, I've done a little over 1,500 houses now in the last, it's about 18 years now. I'm a landlord, I'm a wholesaler. I have owner finance properties. I still do owner finance properties. I was the founder of the REI Expo and I, read B2, I ran B2, created and ran B2R Finance on behalf of Blackstone. Um, it's six years ago next week, actually, we did that. So I've formed and exited several companies. I've sold companies that I had to take back. I've had to shut down companies that 
seemed like a great idea, but um, weren't. So that's me in a nutshell. That's my family. My oldest son, Alex, he is at Oklahoma State trying to walk on to play football. Little Will there isn't so little anymore. He'll be 11 next week. Uh, my, my lovely wife, Jennifer, that's me when I was a little bit younger, and uh, my wonderful dog, Delta. So how to do what I do with no money. What I like to do is always just frame the conversation around my first two years in this business. And the reason I do that is it's always easy to look at someone and see where they're at and think, I want that, right? Um, and so often, I see and hear people that just aren't willing to put in the work. Uh, so although I'm not saying you have to do what I did, I just want to share with you how I got where I am. Um, the first year out of the Marine Corps, I sold life insurance. That was in 2001. I hated life insurance. So I started working for, I put my resume on a website called militaryhire.com. From there, I met a gentleman by the name of Tim Cox who hired me to be a project manager and for a small real estate investing company here in Dallas, Fort Worth that bought rehabbed and owner financed houses. And so my job was to go look at the houses he found, get them under contract, arrange the financing, manage the rehab, do the sales on the owner finance. I had to do all the utilities and everything. Literally my job was to do it all. And by the end of that year, I was working 80 hours a week. I remember there were some days I was on my way home on a Friday night and I needed a commission check to know that I could turn on my cell, keep my cell phone on or have gas in my truck. Uh, it, was, it was a long week, a long year. It was a hard year, um, but it really paved the way that around Christmas of 2002, they owed me a bunch of money in back commissions. They're, they weren't managing the finances of their company the right way. And I had to leave. And I'd bought a lot of wholesale deals from a um, home investors guy out in Rowlett named Bobby. And he had one time said to me, he said, when they, if those guys ever make you mad, you come east with the geese. And if you're not a Texan, what that means is he was willing to hire me. Uh, so long story short, I called Bobby sat down at the table in his office and on a yellow legal pad, we structured a deal where he would give me all of his leads. I would get paid $800 to go buy the house. And if I could sell it to another investor, wholesale it, I'd get another $700. So with my personality, all I heard was great. I get 1500 bucks a house because I just knew I was going <laughs> to uh, do that. So uh, that year in 2003, I contracted 111 houses for him and I wholesaled 87 of them. I made a lot of money. And this was my introduction to Uncle Sam and Aunt Iris because they wanted some of that money that I'd made. And I didn't know that at that time. I was, obviously when you go from making 20 grand a year to 130 grand a year, uh, you, you, you're, you're rather happy and you're probably not set up. And I didn't have anyone advising me on things like self-employment tax and things like that. So in 2003, I paid for that, I think finally in 2007. So it was a wild ride, but uh, you know, uh, if, if you're gonna get started in this, I just believe you gotta get started the right way and, and get your structure proper. But that's how hard I had to work to get my feet in this business. After 2003, that's when I met my, lo my lovely wife. Um, no, actually, I partnered up with Scott Horn for my own entity for two years. But through the hard work of the first step, I met Bobby. And then through Bobby, I met Scott. And through Scott, after 2003 and 2004, I formed Sprint Partners LP with Scott and built a 60 house owner finance portfolio that I was a 35% owner in. So uh, that's my story. But you just got to reset your expectations. It takes a lot of hard work to get where you need to go. So what's required? I always say this, concepts are content, right? Uh, we're going to be really specific as we get into this training course because concepts are cheap. There's a lot of Facebook wannabes. There's a lot of uh, uh, social media influencers and, 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 and uh, uh, people that 
talk a lot about a concept and they go to a class or a training event and they hear a concept and then they just repeat it as if it's acquired knowledge. They repeat it as if it's something they've done and you just have to be aware of that. So first and foremost, I wanna to talk to you about expectations, right? Advertising. Either way, you're going to pay. And, and, and you have to get your mind around this, right? So if you're buying a house, you're going to pay in one of five ways. You're going to pay a wholesaler markup. You're going to pay what's what I call a competition premium, because if you're buying off of MLS, you're you're buying in the public market. So you you know highest and best offers, offer deadlines, uh, bid bid up situations. It's just gonna it's going to be that way. You can buy leads. You can go to services like. Um, Fast home offer and uh, cashforhouses.com, those type of people. And you can just buy leads. Uh, you give them 4,000, 5,000 a month and they just sit fast home offer. They just send you leads. You don't have to worry about the advertising or you can generate leads. And that's, we're going to talk a lot about generating leads and actually being in charge of your advertising dollars, actually being focused on the return. And I'm going to dive into my system in a minute and show you some things. <clears throat> and then the other way you can pay is with time. So if you're not in a position to buy a list and mail a list or spend a bunch of postage, anything like that, you're still paying when you're cold calling on a Saturday, instead of spending time with your family, you're paying with time. So no matter what, it's going to cost you and you're going to have to decide what your strategy is. And you're going to have to decide how much this idea is worth to you. So do not start anything you're not willing to do consistently. Advertising is one of those things that makes no sense at times. Literally in the month of August, I don't think we bought a single house. Nothing changed. My pay-per-click didn't change. My postcards didn't change. My letters didn't change. The way my staff was answering the phone call didn't change. Nothing changed. We just didn't buy any houses. It was just the people that got our postcards weren't interested in selling that month. Um, the people that called, we were getting bid against. There, were, there, there There's all sorts of reasons, but the bottom line is... To me, it's just a blip in the radar because the numbers, the averages, the percentages always catch back up if you're committed to the process. And that's that's why I put this up here because I, I use a Red Bull example. And if you've heard me speak before, you may have heard this example, but it's a great example. The first time I ever saw a Red Bull, I didn't run over and grab it off the shelf and have it, right? The second time, same thing. Third time, same thing. Fourth time, big in cap. They got all the energy stuff, same thing. But then finally one day I'm in a 7-Eleven and I'm tired and I have to go coach my son's football game. And I've been at work since 6 a.m. And I've heard enough about it. I've seen it enough times. I finally grab one. And from that point on, if I'm feeling a little sluggish or it's the afternoon, or if I'm going to do a big speech, I like to have a little Red Bull vodka. I know that Red Bull is a pick-me-up. It gives you wings, as they say in their commercials. But the whole point is, behind advertising, you can't expect um, send, receive, right? It, it, it's, not, it's not a ping-pong ball. It is a cast, reel in, cast, reel in, cast, reel in, cast, reel in. Sometimes you don't catch anything. But you just got to be, if you're committed to the process and you understand it's a process and you remain consistent, you will have consistent results. And I, I don't like to get cheesy, um, but you know, I'm a former Marine, right? Uh, we improvise, adapt, and overcome. There's never an obstacle that we can't get through. And this is what um, I, I always told my 10-year-old, can't, never could. Um, and he was never allowed to say, I can't, he would, he had to say, I'm having trouble. And 
I'll just tell you right now, wherever you're at, if whoever's listening to this and needs to hear this, you can, if you believe you can. This is doable. I assigned $100,000 worth of profit last week. I'm an uneducated guy from Forney, Texas, that graduated high school in summer school. I'm blessed because I found this business. But there's never a day I wake up in my life. Well, there have been days, but most days. <laughs> I never wake up thinking I can't do something. And I'm telling you, if you're sitting there listening to this and you're thinking, I can't finish this course. I can't make that money. I can't wait for him to get to the next week. Um, just disconnect. Ask for your money back. I'll give it to you. Make sure from this point forward, when you're listening to me talk, that you're in a mindset of absorption. You are ready and believing that you can do this because it's the only way you'll be successful because this is a means to an end. Wholesaling is a hard, tough, fun, profitable, financially draining, fun, aggravating, exciting, painful business. <laughs> it goes great. It goes bad. It goes great. It goes bad. It goes great, 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 bad, bad, bad. It's a dealer business. It's a constant find a house, get the house, sell the house, close the house, find the house, get the house, sell the house, close the house. It's a constant grind. And if there's anybody out there that you've watched on social media or YouTube or uh, Facebook that makes it look easy, they are lying. I know it. I've been doing this 20 years. I know every long-term successful investor I know the investors that have money problems that are saying they're doing 200 deals a year. Listen, get that out of your head, right? Because the, the people that are doing a hundred plus deals that you hear all over social media, they're making three or $4,000 per deal. I make 20 plus thousand per deal. So if you do the math, if they're making five, let's just let's say they're making 5000 uh, they're not i know i've seen their assignments i've seen the loans on the buyers borrowers that are doing the deals say they're making 5000 they're making half a million dollars a year and they're doing 100 transactions and they got 95 employees and it's just a headache what i'm talking about what i'm going to talk about is a way to automate and systematize your business to where you can have a low friction lifestyle with a high retention of your profit and that is where we're headed so you get what you pay for. Just remember, I have to say, oh, wait, oh, I have to go back. This is work. Instant success is unlikely. I actually hope that you don't have too, success too quickly because then you have false expectations. Failure is a good thing. Batting practice, right? You have to get up and swing the bat and get your swing down and be ready to go because there's never a perfect situation. You get what you pay for. You're going to pay to get leads. You're going to pay to get training. You're going to pay attorneys for representation. You need to pay for renovation. You have time capital. When you spend your time on something, that costs you money. It is money. It is time. It is valuable. And you, you need to pay for advice, uh, which I hope that's what, why you're listening to me. So let's talk about it. Team, training, education, advertising. Know about the house that I bought. It's because the house I bought this week, I haven't seen. You want to know about the house I'm looking at tomorrow? I'm not looking at a house. My office is, my acquisitions representative is. You want to know how many we're looking at tomorrow? I have no idea. And what, what about how many I'm showing tomorrow? I have three active wholesale deals that I don't even take the calls on. And I'm going to show you how to set that up if that's what you want. Because the whole point about the team concept is to find where you fit in. So I'm going to send you, when I'm done with today, 
in the in, in the resources section that I'll send you, you'll have a link to take a talent assessment. And so you're going to hear me talk a lot about red, yellow, green, and blue. And here's the thing. You may be the driver. You may be the tour guide. You may be the navigator. You may be the mechanic. You need all of them. You may be the driver and the tour guide but you may need a mechanic and a navigator. It may be your spouse, your significant other. It may be an employee. It may be a paid advisor, but you are the boss. And so you're dispatch and you got to get the right people on the bus and you got to get them in the right seat. And I'm going to give you the best advice I, I didn't, I don't listen to. <laughs> And I say that because like, literally I would have saved a lot of time, energy and money if I just listened to this advice from Murray Smith. And it's kind of a tenant of where I'm at now. Hire slowly, fire quickly. Hire slowly, fire quickly. All too often in this business, it attracts personable individuals, people that are really, really just friendly. Your employees, your teammates, your team members work for you. They're not going to take you to Sunday dinner once you stop giving them money. Don't be their friend, be their boss, be their mentor, be their guide. Don't be their friend. Buses make stops. And if you hire someone to be the driver and you don't like the way they drive, you're dispatch. Pull over and get a new driver. And that's advice that I'm going to refer you to when I hear about your team and I hear about what you're doing wrong you got to have the right people in the right seat and buses make stops. There's a lot of times that I haven't fired someone that I knew needed to be fired because I'm a nice guy. And when I, we finally have that conversation, they've been wanting to quit. Had one guy actually blame me for not firing. It was his fault that he was unhappy because he was loyal and I wouldn't do the right thing to fire him. <laughs> I mean, you can't make this stuff up, right? But that's where we were. So just remember, get the right people on the bus, get them in the right seat, make stops. So let's talk about personalities a little bit. A red individual, when you hear me talking, is a go-getter. A red individual is a type A, it's action, 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 action. A blue individual is someone that is a creative personality, a what if, what if this, what if that, what if this, what if that, that's a blue. The yellow is a talker. A talker is uh, someone that... Uh, well, you know, I mean, they, they just, they want to be involved. They want to, they want to uh, feel involved in something greater than them. And then a green's a counter. So me personally, in my personality profile, and, and I'll get you yours uh, this week, um, you'll have to take the test, but I'm a red yellow, which means I'm a doer first and a talker second. So I like to get things done, but I like to take people with me, Right. So uh, it's why it wasn't enough for me to make $100,000 last week. I need to take people with me. Uh, I need to be involved. Uh, the pandemic's definitely made things a little difficult for that. But like for me, you have to understand this because if I'm a really high red, yellow, I'm lacking in blue and green. And blue and green, the blue is something that helps you problem solve. The green is what makes you count your money. Uh, the green is the accountant, the engineer. The blue is like typically a realtor, someone that says, what if a lot? What if this? What if that? What if this? What if that? Uh, and the yellows are oftentimes people that will just talk you to death. And then the reds are the people that when you're talking to them at a networking event, they kind of are staring at you like, okay, are you done talking yet? Because I have to go. Uh, but we're, I'm going to get you through that. But you just have to understand this is all going to tie together because where you fit in is very important because you got to, you, it will teach, I'm going to teach you. That's what seat you need to be in. Right. So wrong button. So let's talk about your team, right? Uh, 
you are the pitcher, okay? So if you if you want to be the boss, be the one in charge, be the uh, the inspiration behind it, you're the pitcher. Every play starts and ends with you. Think about it. You've probably watched baseball. There's nothing to do until the pitcher throws the ball, right? And once the play is over, they throw the ball back to the pitcher. Only once the game is over do they not throw the ball back to the pitcher. Other than that, the pitcher always gets the ball. So you're the pitcher. It starts with you. And without you throwing that first pitch, the game can't start. So you need to have someone that is your catcher, and and it's not going to be me because I can't be in your everyday life. You have to have someone you can talk to. So we've got the Facebook group. You can find a mentor. Mentor doesn't have to be someone you pay. You can find an accountability partner that you can talk to and talk things, but you have to get moving. And you got to have someone so that, you know, they say fastball and you go, oh, no. And then they say, uh, uh, <laughs> they say, all right, curveball. And you know, oh, no. And then they say, all right, slider. And you say, oh, no. And then they say, timeout. And they come out and say, well, are we going to play baseball here or what? Right? You got to have someone you're talking to on a daily basis. I'm going to be your coach, but I'm not going to be your mentor. Legal counsel. So if you're on, the, if you're listening to this and, and you have less than $50,000 to your name, you don't need an attorney yet. Um, if you have more than $50,000 to your name, you should probably get an attorney to help you with some of the things we're about to talk about. I always have a good attorney on call to hand, help me with situations. You can get a lot of attorneys for free in this business by the title company you use. If you use my preferred title company, Secure T Texas Title, um, you're going to get... Uh, you know, you get access to Scott Horn. So it's a little trickery there. I may pay a little bit extra escrow fees when I close a deal, but I've got an attorney to help me all the time. You're going to need a good accountant, CPA, or and bookkeeper. Um, so just a little, like, so I'm a red yellow. So I suck at doing accounting. I'm actually really good at understanding it. And I love doing it once I get started because I, I like kind of shaping my financial future, but like downloading transactions and entering the account code. Oh my God. I mean, I would rather go outside and dig a post hole. I mean, I, I hate accounting, but I have a good bookkeeper now and she does 98% of it. And she sends me a list of questions at the end of every month. So I can just kind of buckle up and knock it all out. Uh, when you're just getting started, if you don't have any other businesses, you're going to need to keep the books yourself. Um, we'll talk about the software in a second. Um, but once, if you're committed to this, you don't do your taxes on TurboTax. Don't do your taxes on TurboTax. Don't do your taxes on TurboTax. Get a CPA. Maximize your deductions. Everybody got all mad that Donald Trump only paid $750 in taxes. And like to me, I'm like, that's awesome. I think it's awesome because I, I don't want to pay taxes. I don't want to pay any extra taxes than I have to. I pay enough property taxes and income taxes and uh, sales taxes. I mean, I pay taxes. Now, I'm going to use a good CPA to make sure that the depreciation flows through to my personal uh, 1040 so that my company may pay some taxes. But when, I, when they look at me on paper, um, you know, I'm not paying taxes. Uh, I mean, I will, but I don't want to pay him. Uh, you got to have a good title company. Um, I, I, I have had some really bad things happen to me uh, with title companies. Uh, bad title work, uh, people not filing release of liens. We had one that literally took all the money for the closing and didn't pay off the underlying mortgage. So a couple months later, uh, there was a big lawsuit. Uh, this guy still owed a million dollars on these five or six houses. And the investor thought he owned them and the investor owed a, owed a million dollars to his lender. So there was about $2 million owed on a million dollars worth of property. And it was a big deal. The lady went to jail. Uh, but that's, you know, you're, you're going to hear me say this a lot in the next 10 weeks. You may beat the rap, but you won't beat the ride, right? So you may get your money back 
but it's not worth the time. The first time I ever had to have a good title company, I paid $40,000 cash. And this was early in my business for a house over in uh, East Dallas. I kid you not, things have been vacant for four or five years. But then it's like the next week, this heir shows up and knocks on the door and tells my guy, like, I own this house. What are you doing? Anyway, so someone had found out the house had been vacant for a while, broke in, forged some affidavits of airships and got us to close. Yes, I got my money back. But what you don't understand is oftentimes title policies, title insurance, fraud is excluded. So you may think you're insured, but you're not. We had to find things they had done wrong in verifying the affidavits to get our money back. So you need a good title company. You always got to have a good lender. I don't care if you're on this call and you have $7 million cash sitting in your bank account. The world's most wealthy people taught me debt is cheaper than equity. Debt is cheaper than equity. Debt is cheaper than equity. In the words of a billionaire mentor of mine, team, team, team. When you're paying less than 5%, you take all of it they'll give you. You're a smart man. You can make twice as much as that. And he's right, right? So if you can get money for 6%, 5%, and you know how to go make 12%, I mean, I'm not going to get into IRRs right now, but I mean, it's all about, you got to read The Richest Man in Babylon if you haven't read it. Go to my website, order the book. You got to start now making your money work for you right? You don't work for your money anymore. Your money needs to be producing your return. Every time you make a dollar, you need to go find a way to turn it into two. And if you think like that and you work like that and you live like that, you'll have it. But you always got to have a good lender. I don't care how much cash you have. I can help you with the real estate loans. Ah, general contractor. Okay. So, if you're on this call and you are a professional general contractor, awesome. You should keep being a general contractor on your projects. But if you're on this call and you're an attorney and you don't remodel houses for a living, riddle me this, why would you want to start remodeling houses for a living on your own houses? It's just not, doesn't line up. You got to have a good general contractor because you, 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 there are times I go work on my own houses. Oftentimes it's because I know myself and I know that the red on this slide is going to make me go create a business soon. I'm going to get involved in something because I'm a red yellow. So oftentimes if I'm bored and I don't have much going on, I find manual labor to keep me distracted. But every minute you're on that job site, you're not working on your business. You're not enjoying what it is this industry provides. Now, if you are a handy guy, like if, you, if you're like me and you own a tool belt and a bunch of tools and stuff and you grew up building houses and you're good at it and you actually enjoy it, do it. And I say that actually about all nine positions on here. If you're an attorney, awesome. Go ahead and do the legal work. If you're an accountant, awesome. Go ahead and do the accounting. If you're an escrow officer, do, do, do the title work, so on and so forth. If you're a realtor that loves to sell stuff, you know, be the sales rep. I'm your coach. I'm your consultant. I'm the guy in center field. I don't do a whole lot. I make sure the ball doesn't go deep on you. And from where I stand, I can see your entire team and I can help you make adjustments. And that's what I'm here for. For the next 10 weeks, that's what I'm doing. Uh, and then you got to have a sales rep because I don't care who you are, what you are, when you are, everything is always for sale. And you need to be in this business churning inventory. inventory. You can co-wholesale, you can um, joint venture. You may see one of my assets. I know there's a guy on the call right now that saw one of my houses for sale a couple months ago and made like 10 grand off of it. Uh, because he paid me, I, I thought he was buying it and I gave him a good price and he turned around and flipped it to someone else. But you know that, hey, that was effort. That was hard work. He did well. I was, I was happy for him. I made what I wanted to make. So when you think about the process in this business, uh, 
what you got to think is let, let's just talk about the life cycle of the uh, of the transaction, right? So you get the initial lead. Somebody calls, ring, ring, ring. Someone has to pick up the phone. And if you have a full time job, you need to find someone that can answer the phone for you. It may be another uh, person in this training. It may be a virtual assistant. It may be an answering service. But the bottom line is, I'm telling you, these people that you're going to try to find to sell you a house, they don't leave messages. They will leave messages, but a lot of times they don't leave messages. So you're going to have to have someone to answer the phone. You're going to have to have a field rep, someone that's going to go out and meet with the customers. Someone that is going to uh, you know, go out and make the offers. And then you got to have someone that's going to approve the off offers. Right. I mean, I have a buyer, Randy, and his daughter, Shelby, they sign contracts for my company. I don't ever even see the house until I know I have a contract on it. And then oftentimes I don't even see it then. They just send me pictures. Uh, but that's a 10 year relationship. Right. Uh, when they first started, I wanted to, you know, sign the contract myself and see the house the second time um, under an option. Somebody has to be in charge of arranging the money for the deals. Somebody has to be in charge of making sure that the, the transaction management. Now, there's some good transaction management stuff we're going to go over, but somebody's got to be in charge of that. Financial arrangement. Oh, I just said that. Uh, onboarding. So once you get to where you're buying and fixing houses, there's a lot of work. I mean, from the closing to the connecting the utilities to scheduling the mower to scheduling the contractors to making sure the insurance is in place, making sure that you got the gas connected, the water connected. There's just a lot of work. So someone has to be in charge of that. Now, when you're a small business, you may do all of this, but as we get into later phases of this training, I'm going to help you break it down and give you some checklists to help you with it. Project management. And that's all aspects, right? Somebody has to be in charge of everything that's happening inside your business. So if, if you're running a weekly advertising budget like I am, you know, somebody, I'm in charge of that. That's what I'm in charge of in this business. I manage the advertising. I manage the Google Analytics. I, I manage the Google pay-per-click. I make sure the postcards go out. I make sure the probate goes out. That's my job. Um, and... I watch the projects as they progress. So right now, <laughs> for the first time in a year and a half, I actually have no projects under construction. Um, everything, well, I mean, I got some punch list stuff on a couple of sales contracts, but right now I don't have anything under construction. And, and I love it when that works out that way because we're getting near my favorite time of the year when I don't like to work all that much. So I'd rather not have a house under construction this time of year. Condition management. When you have a vacant house, somebody needs to be putting physical eyes on the home every week, at least. Just houses get neglected, trash cans get left on the street, uh, mail piles up out of the mailbox, newspapers, the yard man forgets a week, you get a code violation, you just, somebody has to have eyes on the, con on the property every week. Uh, Got to have someone in charge of like designated per property for sailing, uh, selling. And then, uh, you know, uh, someone has to offload that property. That's uh, like today, I, I got a bill in the mail over the weekend from the city of Balt Springs. It's over here somewhere. I forgot to disconnect the water on a house that I closed September 1st. So those people, of course, they've been living with free water for a month and a half. Um, uh, that's just the way it goes. Um, so anyway, someone has to, I've got a checklist. Uh, I don't use it much, but I obviously should. I just cost myself a couple hundred bucks. So let's talk about some things that we're going to set up over the next week or so. And if you're on the call live, be patient. We've got about six or seven slides left. We're going to finish up on time and we'll have time for questions. So business phone, you got Google voice. Okay. Uh, I don't use Google voice. 
Um, why is my, oh, I have to, hang on. I got to just share the screen, not the application window. All right. So now you ought to be able to see the, um, Yeah, so I use call rail and I'll show you how complicated my call rail is. I love call rail. It's, ex it's a little expensive, but if I'm in this for the long haul. So here you see all of my companies. In the last month, we've filled almost 300 phone calls. I'm gonna drill it down to my, the, the sellers. This is my buy call acquisition company. So in the last month, we've got 144 calls. So, I mean, what is that? Roughly 30, 40 a week-ish, 30. Yeah, about 30 a week, um, 35 a week. Uh, and, and you can see it averaged here. Uh, we'll go by weeks, right? That way you can really see. I mean, this was, look, I mean, such a strange week, right? I did nothing different. Absolutely nothing different. And that week had zero calls. This week, 31. This one, 26. This one, 32. This one, 42. This one, 13. The second week of the month is sometimes a little slow, but uh, just, you know, there, there, there is no rhyme or reason. And down here, you can see probate, postcards, wholesale marketing, postcards, postcards, PPC new. These are all the... Uh, um, tracking numbers I have. Because if you look at my tracking numbers, I've got my pay-per-click pool. These are, these are phone numbers that are served up by Google in my pay-per-click. I've got the 2019 postcards list, the 2019 probate list. Now we're on to the 2020 postcards list and the 2020 probate, probate letters list. And then these are some old postcards that I haven't mailed, used these numbers in years, like literally two to three years and I still get phone calls on them. I'm telling you on my card, I put keep this card and I can't tell you how many times people call and like, well, it said to keep the card, so I did. Uh, so never use a number and, and not keep the phone number. Um, it's, it, it's just very important. But anyway, I use call rail, right? So, and if you need help with call rail, I can definitely talk you through it. I love call rail. I pay about 120, 130 bucks a month for mine, but mine I have, my seller's business, my finance business. I had a fast home offers business for a while. I've got my insurance business and I have my other consulting stuff through here. So I use this to manage everything. And you can look over here. Uh, tracking. Call flows. You can see here the way I route my calls. Call comes in, we record the call. There's a simultaneous call where it rings me, Shelby, and Randy for 60 seconds. If it's not answered after 60 seconds, it forwards it to a recording. And I would tell you of the 100 something calls a month, maybe one gets to this recording. It's just very rare that me, Shelby, or Randy are not available. Uh, so I love call rail. It gives me recordings. And when we get a little bit more into this, um, in the lead conversion and uh, lead generation, lead conversion time frames, we'll play some of these recordings. You know, here you look at one that came in today uh, while we were on this call, uh, six minutes uh, and 28 second call. All these little short ones are just kind of junk, uh, but these nine minutes, five minutes, six minutes, uh, five minutes, uh, you know, there, there's some good, there's some good ones in here. Um, so I use call rail. Uh, just like 90,000 foot view on the legal entity stuff. Uh, actually, we're going to talk about that in a minute. I think that's the last slide because I didn't want to bore you until, uh, yeah, that's the last slide. Um, all right. So, yeah, so you can go back to this. Uh, I'll, get, I'll introduce you to Veraspark, get some business cards. You can get a logo created on Fiverr.com. 
recommend you go ahead and get a domain name. You can use on carrot to get uh, investor squeeze pages. Uh, and then you'll need to sign up for all of these accounts as well. Um, I mean, you, if you're going to wholesale, you're going to need a YouTube channel for videos, which we'll talk about later. You either need a box.net, a Dropbox or a OneDrive account so that you can share files and folders. You're going to need a good digital camera if you don't have an iPhone or a smartphone with a, uh, that's like five years old or less. Uh, we use Craigslist a lot. We use Postlets uh, and we use Google Drive to share. And if you don't have an email provider, you're going to want to set up a MailChimp.com account today and start adding email addresses into your buyers list. Um, it, it's free for up to until you have like 2000 emails. Uh, people ask me all the time how I create a buyers list. It's like, man, I mean, I, I've been doing it since 2003. I mean, if you communicate with me, I'm adding you to my database and you know, then it's up to you to, you, you can unsubscribe if you'd like. Uh, I'll send this around. Um, Excel. Okay. So, uh, CRM, a lot of people get buried under CRMs. Um, I use HubSpot. HubSpot works really well for me. Now, there is a free version of HubSpot. <laughs> I don't even know why I'd tell you anything else. Uh, um, there's a free version of HubSpot that works really well. And if you look here, you'll see this is my deal board, right? So here's everything that's a cold lead follow-up. Here's everything. There's 90 dead leads over here. Here's my 30 closed ones from this year. Uh, here's, that's the under construction. That's the, uh, that's actually um, under construction, to, under contract to sell. Uh, this is a signed pending close. But you see, I mean, this is, a, no, that's not. Uh, that's a sign pending close. That's not, there's another one. Anyway. Yeah. I mean, so these are all my properties, right? Uh, and these are my leads. You, there's four leads, three appointments set, 10 and offer made one and expecting a contract. Uh, you can see that, you know, I love HubSpot. So if it, what you got to do is go to HubSpot.com slash TH, um, and you can sign up for free. Uh, I, I highly recommend HubSpot. Um, but you know, if, if, if you've got a CRM you use, it doesn't matter. You just got to have a CRM. You got to be tracking what it is you do. I personally recommend you use HubSpot. On the phone lines, I think I just showed you this in CallRail, but you know, just to be general, and again, guys, this seems like a lot. And I'm not like, you know, giving you direct links. Let me get through this. It'll all make sense. And then when I send you the PDF, it'll have direct links and what I recommend you set up and when. Uh, that'll be kind of the homework, if you will, for the next uh, seven days. It, at a minimum, like if you set up a call rel account, it's fairly inexpensive. I want to say it's like 30 bucks a month up to five numbers. You get a lead line and a lead line is the number you're going to put on your letters, your postcards, your advertising material that says, hey, please call me to sell your sell me your house. A general line is what you're going to put on your business card that is, you know, like an office or it could just be your cell phone number for now. But you don't want to mix the two because when your phone rings and it's a new motivated seller, you want to know. And we'll talk about that in the lead generation phase. You still need a fax line, unfortunately. Uh, there's a lot of title companies and uh, pay, uh, mortgage lenders that do short sales and things like that, that they still make you fax. Um, and then eventually you want a marketing phone number. Uh, and again, we'll talk about that in the dis disposition phase, but uh, those are just the things that you want. I wanna, I'll send around an action item list tomorrow with the recording of this video and the slide deck. On the email addresses, you know, you want to have an incoming email list, uh, 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 email address. So I use leads.com and what happens, all the ones and everything, email address, but then I've got it set up as an auto forwarder. So it sends MMS messages to me and Shelby and Randy. And I'll show you that in the setup of the lead generation phase as well. Um, General email address, uh, you know, that's just your, whatever your personal email address is. I mean, like if you go to GoDaddy and get a domain, 
uh, and I'll send you the link to do it. Uh, you can get like five free email addresses and I'll show you how to do it. Um, so I need to add that as a supplemental training. Let me make a note here. Uh, and in a sales email address, um, we use wholesale at dfwinvestors.com and it's just a distribution list, but it's just a good way to track it. You know, you can use, on, if you're not great at setting up domains and things of that nature, then don't spend your energy doing it, Right. Uh, just use on carrot and it'll provide all of these and I'll send a link around for that. But, you know, basically I operate, uh, I don't operate a, a site for private money. Um, but, uh, I will show you, we've got a couple minutes here. I operate dfwinvestors.com. This is my I mean, I built this in World WordPress. It's something I'm good at. Uh, feel free to check it out and copy to your heart's content if that's something that you like to do. Um, but if not, you'll just use an on carrot template. That's what I used until it got to where a point where I outgrew it. Um, but this is where I market for sellers, right? So this is my seller information site, right? Then I have instantequity.com, which you're all going to get a featured, you know, get featured listings out of. And this is where I market my wholesale deals. Um, it just, it just works. Uh, it's also where I build my buyers list. So um, I just tore it down and, and it's so much better now. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you're going to want to just look at this uh, and use this at the beginning for your inventory sales website. But, you know, once you get going, you'll want your own. And that's what you should do. And we're going to talk about recording a video and things like that. Um, yeah, so that's the focus sites that you need. Um, we're going to wrap up today on LLC, LP, C Corp, S Corp, and all of that stuff. And then I'm happy to take questions. Um, but I told you guys I'd keep it to an hour. And I know your family uh, husband, wife, daughter, uh, brother, sister, son, maybe waiting around the corner for you to be uh, go eat dinner. So I'll try to be quick. If you have over $50,000 cash right now, I recommend you go form an LLC. If you're in Texas, I can connect you with a good, good attorney for LLCs. I use Brian Dunklin here in Dallas. Um, if, if you're not in Texas, um, you know, you can use legal zoom, uh, they are effective. They're a little slow, um, but it doesn't really matter that they're slow um, as long as they get it done because you're not in a rush, right? Um, I recommend a simple LLC. There's a lot. Now, if you have enough money or assets that it's a concern or a question for you, then you need to go talk to your CPA or your tax attorney and they will tell you. But if you've got around 50 grand, 15, 20 grand sitting in the bank that you want to devote to this entity, I highly recommend you just go form an LLC. If you have a tax advisor already, get them involved. It makes it easier to separate the money, okay? And it makes it easier for you to track your success, okay? If you're really sophisticated, you may want a limited partnership. But if you have enough money to where that's actually a concern, then you need to get an attorney and have them tell you yes or no. Uh, if, if it's just you and another, uh, partner or just you, you may want to look at an S corp. There are some advantages. We've used it before in our business. Um, right now we have a C corp and an S corp and about seven LLCs. We have a very complicated tax strategy. Again, I don't like to pay taxes and neither should you, but for asset protection sake, all lenders in the nation now for real estate investing, except LLCs. Uh, except, not except. Um, so I would say if you're just looking to get started, well, and here's the other thing. If you have less than $10,000, do not spend $1,000 on setting up LLCs and stuff. 
go to your county courthouse and register an assumed name certificate. So if you plan on naming your LLC, TGH Funds LLC, that's one of my LLCs, go ahead and just go to the county and most of them you can do it online now and just do an, a DBA, a assumed name is what it's called and lock the name in, right? So do it with the state and do it with the county you're in. It's gonna cost you 50, 60 bucks. So do the search, make sure your name's available and file the DBA. Then take the DBA down to the bank and open a new checking account. And this is very, 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 very important. If you, because by opening the new checking account, you're separating the funds, you're establishing a business bank account, right? And that business bank account is under a DBA. And so then you're going to put $1,000 in that bank account or 5,000, whatever it is you're devoting. Or maybe you're, you're talking to your uh, significant other or your family, and you've decided that you can only put $500 a month into this. So you need to put that 500 into that business bank account. And here is why. If you start out with 5,000 and that bank account is empty, it's really easy to figure out how much you've lost, right? And in the opposite direction, if you start out with 5,000 and you never put any more money in and you look in there one day and there's $25,000 in there, you know how much you've made. And if you take that $20,000 profit and you divide it by the six months you've been doing it, now you're being really honest with yourself, right? Because too many investors are like, oh, I made $20,000 on a deal. It's like, no, you didn't, dude. It took you six months to make that 20,000, right? So you made a little over three grand a month. And that's great when you're getting started building the foundation of a business, but the whole thing is being realistic and being honest with yourself, right? Because you're gonna spend money today that don't come back, does not come back to you until December. You're gonna spend money tomorrow that doesn't come back to you until February. And you've got to have it separate. You got to manage it like a business and you got to be in charge. So look out tomorrow. I'm going to send the PDF of all these slides that we went over tonight, as well as a, a word document that will be entitled action items. And it will give you specific links and it will give you um, your action items. Uh, so I hope tonight was a good start. It was a very broad topic and conversation. Um, I am cool to take questions or we can all go about our way. So thank you for your time. Have a good night.